Okay, well, it's 9 o'clock, so we'll call this uh, regular meeting of the Commissioner's Court to order. It's on the 12th day of June at 9 o'clock. Uh, for the invocation today, we've got Pastor Lewis has come to uh, give us our invocation today. If all rise. Good morning. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus today. Father God, we want to tell you thank you first of all for this is the day that you have made. We will rejoice and we will, we will be glad in it. Father God, we want to thank you for life and we want to thank you for liberty. We want to thank you for faith, family, and we want to thank you for freedom to worship. We thank you today because you are such a good God to us, Lord. We want to tell you thank you today for all those who protect and serve, Father God, this great country. From the national, Father God, to the civic, to the local, we want to tell you thank you today. We thank you, Father God, for the liberty that you have given us and the liberty as being your children in this world. Father, we ask you that you would bless our nation. We ask you to cause America to have a spiritual awakening. Through this time of distress, may America look up and call out to you, Lord. Raise up godly leadership in American government for any and all strategies against America and Israel. Cause our president and civic leaders to have a life-changing experience with you, Father Lord. Disrupt and dispense the, with the liberal, immoral, anti-God agendas in American politics and around the world and have those seek your glory. Raise up godly leadership in our country, in our city, in our community governments. Bring a great spiritual awakening to the church, to your church here in East Texas. Father God, we want to thank you once again. Father God, for all the things that you have done. Father God, how you are continuing to bring unity, Father God, and strength to this community. We give you praise and we give you glory, Father God, for your forgiveness, Lord. Father God, we thank you because, Lord, we have the opportunity to come before you boldly to the throne of grace. For we have all sinned and come short of your glory. So we thank you for your plan of salvation. We give you glory, honor, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and in this Number one on the agenda is the public comments and requests for information on non-agenda items in accordance with Section 551-042, the Texas Open Meetings Act. No speakers today. Number two, consider and possibly approve the minutes from the May 22nd and 23rd special meeting of the Commissioner's Court. Make that motion. Got a motion by Commissioner Applewhite to approve that. Second. Second by Commissioner Parcher, uh, Parker. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? I'm curious now. Number three, presentation by Mr. Mark Stansel concerning the county's nuisance policy. Mr. Stansel, good luck. Good book. How y'all doing? Hey, good. I appreciate y'all uh, with this nuisance law. I, I have been bombarded for years, but uh, if you notice the text that Mr. Matthew sent my wife, obviously the investigator was out there prior to April 27th. And so if you go to the, uh, the first set of pictures, that would be that property. And where my finger is, that is, that is the 300 foot off the two roads. This little area that the officer told him uh, the neighbor told me that the officer told him that's his state protection area. So he moved a set of cars down there, which you got uh, uh, the, the, the picture on the bottom where you can still see them from the road. The picture on the top is where you can still see them from the road. So I don't know how, if you read your nuisance uh, authority when it says 300 foot of a public street for 10 days or more unless the rubbish or object is completely enclosed in a building or not visible to the public street. So how is that 
legal to be. Okay, you go over to the next page. That is where the shop is. And we even have lawnmowers and so three weeks ago I asked you because I felt like at a certain time, you know, uh, Mr. Mitchell told me one time after 30 days of getting your notice, y'all move forward to the next step and I haven't seen anything move. The only thing really moved is with the, uh, the officer telling my neighbors who was the complainant, that's, that's moved. But Mr. Nessel, in, in, in my defense, I've, I've talked to Officer Bain and he told me that there wasn't any, any violations at this time, but I will check back with him. Only problem that I have uh, checking with him is if they do become before me, then they get it a conflict of interest because I knew about it prior before them coming to court, but we will do some checking on that as well for you. Okay, uh, because what I'm reading and, and what's happening, you know, it, it ain't working. And that's one problem. If you move over to the next one uh, with the, the buildings and the fire trucks, I mean, that's been sitting there for years. And then there's another one on County Road 4660. Been sitting there for years. And ain't nothing moving. Did you talk with Officer Baines on, on this? Well, I did try to follow up with him. Uh, uh, maybe three weeks or so after, four weeks after it happened, I called to, to ask him how it was going, and Mr. Baines told me that I should just go up there and buy them out. Hmm. Mr. Stanzel, on, the, on this with the washing machine and the lawnmower and all, what county road did you say that is? No, that's off 49. Off oh, 49. Yeah, his place runs on 49 in the county road uh, on the 300 foot deal, but the washing machine, is right there by my fence and them two old red cars and everything behind that building was supposed to be because they worked on cars but if you go and look they don't even pay taxes they've been in business six seven years and they they're not even a business mr baines if you look at the deal he's out there talking to them like they're business they don't even pay taxes they ain't, they ain't doing nothing for the seats up there We, we certainly appreciate you bringing yeah, this, appreciate this to us, but, but also we want you to know, and it's not just uh, in uh, Precinct 4 there, there's, there's trouble all over the county. We are trying to, we are trying to make progress. We've just, we've just been started this in about three, four months into it. Uh, we're not going to quit. I can promise you that. Well, and, it looks uh, like to me that I personally don't have anything wrong with a uh, person with Clint Baines, but y'all might have to find somebody that goes out there me and, and those three uh, those three neighbors, uh, <clears throat> we're customers up here. And all we need was somebody to go out there and tell whichever customer what the law is. That's all you need is send somebody out there that tends to that, not their own personal agenda. We agree with you. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mark. Number four, consider and possibly approve the dis distribution of funds not to exceed the $2,970 from the ADCOC to the Juvenile Department for Participation in the Juvenile Probation Mental Health Grant approved on December the 8th, 2022. The contract period is from September the 1st of 22 to July the 31st of 2023. Barbara, would you like to speak on that at all? Thank you. 
they will apply for the reimbursement. The reimbursement comes to us and we will send it to them. So we won't be out of the funds. Good. So we just need a motion so we can approve that up and the check's already here and so we can move forward. I'll make that motion. Got a motion by Commissioner Applewhite to approve that. Second. Second by Commissioner Mitchell. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Carries unanimously. Number five, considering possibly approved part-time employees for the clerk's, <coughs> county clerk's office, including 29 or less hours per week for 13 weeks at a rate of $14 per hour. That's going to be yes, welcome. It's here a little different looking today. <laughs> and we have, like I had spoke to y'all before, we have had several issues in this past six months, eight months that we've been having issues prior to me coming in and since I've been in office with medical emergencies and staff being out and family emergencies. Um, I had planned on asking for this just to be prepared and last week we did have an employee come up with a, a major family emergency that will require her to be out of office for an extended amount of time. So I do need to hurry up to get somebody hired to be able to help in situations that I would help them whenever I can't be able to be there for them. Now, is this for the whole year or just going to be just for summer or do you have a plan on that? Uh, I would like to have it for an entire year, but this is just until October. October, until, the budget, until you can change your budget up. Right. Okay. Um, but I, I do need to hire somebody as soon as possible to get them trained to be able to uh, fill in where I can be going or go to a position to do that job because that job is going to be more extensive for the person that's going to be out. I make a motion to to uh, hire part-time employees for the county clerk's office because I think it's a, uh, really the cheapest thing for the county to do because you don't have to supply the insurance and all that stuff for them. And it, it's just part-time, and, and I, I make the motion to approve that. I had a motion made by Commissioner Mitchell to approve that. Second. Second by Commissioner Parchman. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, all those opposed? <clears throat> Carries unanimously. Number six, consider and possibly approve retaining a law firm of Allison Bass and McGee LLP regarding to the potential Titus County solid waste ordinance. Uh, we've talked about this a couple of times uh, in commissioner's court. Uh, the commissioners uh, down at one of our meetings, uh, we've uh, talked about this. Reason that we want to put this in place <clears throat> is because we can't, a big company out of Dallas come here and have a have a waste they can just come in buy the land and we have no control over it with uh, without this in place uh, it's going to run us about uh, ten thousand dollars through the lawyers to get that done uh, there's going to be quite a bit of work they'll come down and set the surveys on all of it and do all those property lines which Joyce has been trying to help me get <laughs> and so we found out there's a there's an easier and better way to do it. Uh, that way we're covered legally. Also, uh, what this would uh, encompass, if we do get this in place, there wouldn't be any transitional trash either. And uh, some of you may not know what transitional trash is. <clears throat> a company will uh, buy a spot of land, bring it from different counties, different towns, and, and bring it here and just switch it to different trucks. This will include that and any landfills uh, that we don't know about. Without this in place, they can buy a property anywhere in the county and put in a land field and us have no control over it. This way we do have, they'll have to be approved through the county uh, before the commissioner's uh, court before they can make a move like this. Uh, I know it's $10,000, but I really think it protects the citizens of Titus County and uh, keeps us uh, safe from uh, another waste field coming here. We've got plenty of room there with the one that we're working with now. Uh, to suffice, they, I think they said 15 to 20 years, but uh, with everything that's happening with Dallas, moving things this way, transitional uh, waste and things of that nature, I really think it's important for us to move forward with this and get this uh, as a county policy. Made a motion we approve it. I got a motion by Commissioner Parchman to approve that, to pay the $10,000 to the Allison <coughs> firm. Second. Got a second by Commissioner <coughs> Mitchell. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Carries unanimously. Number seven, considering possibly approve hiring Arnold and Walker 
Arnold Walker and Arnold to perform external audit at the estimated cost of $38,925 for the county and also for $3,500 for our juvenile department. Uh, from, the, from the audits that we've received from them, uh, you can get an audit from different uh, places, uh, but sometimes they're awful hard to follow. Uh, I really appreciate the way they presented it and make it make it easy uh, to follow along with their audits. And uh, I think we should stick with them. Make a motion. We keep them. Got a motion by Commissioner Applewhite to keep uh, Arnold Walker in honor. Second. Got a second by Commissioner Parker. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Carries unanimously. <clears throat> Number eight, consider and possibly give a 30-day notice for the emergency management position. We've talked about this several times, talked about with the city as well. Right now, Chief McRae does both. He does the city and the county uh, emergency manager, and uh, the city feels like it, and we feel like it may be best for, for everybody involved to have our own city, our own emergency manager over our, uh, over our emergencies out in the county. What is, I need, I need the reasoning behind this. I don't, I don't see us needing to myself, but. You have to have one. Each of the county and the city has to have one. But I'm saying I don't, I don't see the need to have two in the county. Or two for both, have one for the city and one for the county. Well, even the they, city manager said it sounded like a conflict of interest to him because we we contract our fire protection to them, and we also hand over the emergency management. And, and it was been several of us talk, and, and they they said they could see also as a conflict of interest because they said what they charge us for for fire protection, and, and that's a conflict of interest. Anytime you got your hand in both cookie jars, you see. That, that, that would be my reason to tell you. Like I said, we need to give them 30 days notice at any point that we're going to do it, so. Well, I'll make the motion to, to do it. I got the motion made by Commissioner Mitchell to uh, give the 30-day notice for our emergency manager and open the position. Second. Got a second by Commissioner Applewhite. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? No. Jimmy, only one voting no. Consider and possibly approve the quarterly investments reports, Ms. Barbara. So do you have any comments, Ms. Applewhite, I guess I should say? <laughs> do you have any comments on that? <laughs> Barbara's still there for you if you need any questions, I'm sure, and she'll help you right along. But we appreciate y'all, Barbara, in your office as well, both of you ladies. So I need a motion to approve those to the quarterly investment report. I'll make that motion. motion. I got Commissioner Parker I, making that motion I'll and Commissioner uh, Parts <laughs> uh, second it. All on the same note there. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Carries unanimously. Number 10, approve the oral and written reports of the county officials. Make that motion. Got a motion made by Commissioner Applewhite to approve those reports. Second. Got a second by Commissioner Parchman. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. All those opposed? Number 11, consider and possibly accept the treasurer's report as a matter of the record. I, get a motion. <laughs> I got a motion made by Commissioner Parchman and seconded by Commissioner Parker to, to uh, accept the treasurer's report as a matter of record. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? 
Number 12, approve the budget amendments. Ms. Barbara? Yes, sir. You three budget amendments number 25, 26, and 27. The first one is for that $2,970 from Act Hall that we just discussed with the juvenile probation. Um, I took the liberty of going ahead and preparing that because I felt certain that we were going to approve it because we're not out on county funds. Number 26 is for the property insurance. Um, and that is $15,000 approve those budget amendments i'll make that motion i've got a motion by commissioner parker to approve those budget amendments second second by commissioner applewhite all those in favor uh, uh, all those opposed carries unanimously number 13 sign and pay orders and approve payments make a motion to pay our bills and jimmy makes a motion to pay the bills second second by commissioner mitchell all those in favor uh, all uh, those opposed Nathan, you got here a little late. Are you wanting to speak? Yes, sir. Okay, if you'd like to come up, we'll we'll entertain that at this time. Thank you, Judge Cooper. I um, appreciate the opportunity. I apologize for being um, a little bit late, and uh, just wanted to bring to the to the attention of of the commission um, a program uh, that hopefully we could. Uh, discuss and take action on um, next in the next few weeks at the, the next um, county commission meeting and so what we're hoping to do is set up a meeting with uh, Ms. Barbara and and anyone on the council who may wish to attend that uh, or I'm sorry council commissioners I'm sorry um, or uh, I know uh, the county attorneys is, is, is out of town for a while but the program is fairly innocuous in the sense that there's not a huge need um, it's more of a I know there's concerns um, from a financial perspective, so I just wanted to address those with Ms. Barbara at the table. Anyone um, on the council, oh, I'm sorry, the commission um, is able to just review the process, but what it is is it's called Texas PACE program, P-A-C-E. And so there's no, there is a PACE program in almost every every state in the union, uh, but, and, and Texas is, um, began uh, around 2013 Legislatively, the legislature uh, enabled this, and you can go to their website and, and learn, learn a little bit more about it. What I thought I'd do is read the letter. I, um, I'll, I'll kind of forward to everyone just to kind of introduce you to the program. Um, surrounding communities or counties uh, that have adopted are Hopkins County, Bowie County, Smith County, um, nearby cities are like Paris, the city of Paris. Um, and so what it, what it, it it's, uh, you know what, I'll, I'll, I'm gonna read my document real quick before I, I continue reading and then you can uh, ask me a few questions, but I won't take long. So, uh, dear Judge Cooper and County Commission, the Mount Pleasant Economic Development Corporation values this continued relationship with Titus County to advance economic development initiatives for our community. To that end, and after hearing a presentation from the Texas PACE program, the Board of Directors for the PDC voted on May 18, 2023 to uh, send a letter formally requesting Titus County to evaluate and potentially adopt the uh, Texas PACE program. This program exists in some form in almost every state and has been adopted by many of our surrounding communities. Additionally, and probably most importantly, 
um, for us is uh, incoming business local bounty uh, has specifically asked for a uh, citywide or a countywide adoption in order to pursue their refinancing options. After communicating up with City of Mount Pleasant, uh, MTC would prefer a broader application and adoption of Texas Pace, which will include this City of Mount Pleasant to allow more economic development and investment opportunities for both existing and uh, enforcing needs across the county, um, which the, count the county commission is aware of. Um, and city to rehabilitate aging improvements and encourage private investment, MPEDC uh, considers this a timely request. And one more paragraph um, that I'll read. Um, uh, Texas Pace is a proven financial tool that incentivizes Texas property owners to upgrade facility infrastructure with little to no capital outlay. And approved by state legislation and established by local governments through voluntary adoption, um, Texas Pace program uh, enables owners to lower their operating costs and use the savings to pay for eligible water, conservation, energy efficiency, resiliency, and distributed generation projects. Um, owners gain access to private, affordable, long-term, typical, typically uh, 10 to 20 years financing um, that, that is not available through traditional funding avenues. And to kind of give you an idea of how, um, when I say innocuous, um, the program is, if it's adapted at a county level, it, it, it includes the city of Mount Pleasant. They don't have to even approve it. It's, it's not affecting taxes. It's not affecting revenue. It's, it's, it, uh, all the program does is it gives, um, it will operate outside of the county and the city. It'll be like a financing institution. And the financing institution, the, the kind of kicker is that they actually get the power of a governing entity like a city or a county um, to, um, uh, to go after our debt for, that's part of their, uh, um, collateral so and, and I don't mean it as collateral I'm, I'm explaining it a little bit incorrectly but it allows Mr. Hudson um, it allows uh, a financing institution to use the authority of, of a county so it's a really great program in the sense that it allows and especially with what's happening with a lot of rehabilitation in downtown buildings um, I, we, Diamond C is going to be purchasing the, uh, the the old First Baptist Church or you're looking at Talco or you're looking at buildings around the county that are rehabilitated. It could be it include a new roof, um, it could include windows, and so it's a, and HVAC. So a lot of the components um, within a, a normal debt service operation um, or loan that takes a long time to recoup, um, it, it can carve those little pieces out and structure the loan, and then allow these little pieces to be to be ha to have a much lower um, 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 interest rate and. And so we think it's really interesting for people coming into Mount Pleasant. People can be rehabbing apartments, could be rehabbing houses, commercial buildings, and, and drastically reduce their ability to, to, to borrow. And so, and, and um, when, as it comes to local bounty, um, they're specifically restructuring right now and making that request. And um, they've been calling me um, once every about eight to 10 days. Uh, um, we, they introduced us to this program about two and a half weeks ago. Uh, then I, I was on vacation and everything. But the, they're, they're hoping to, to kind of that we can get support from the city, uh, from, the, from the county. Um, if not, we would go to the city. But I just really think this would be very beneficial to the county in general. So just, I'll, is there anyone, I'll just ask now, that would want to be on a call with the Texas Pace Program to learn a bit more about it or ask those questions at that time? Or is there a way, a format that the, the commission would prefer to hear it? Or would you just would like? It'd probably be easier than an executive session for us. Uh, with this uh, being said, you said it, it don't affect the tax rate or the, the income of the county or the city, either one at all. Yes, and and it, and, it, and it'll come. Just to give you an idea, how uh, it's the way it's set up legislatively, um, it's kind of for the private sector, but it's they've it's just kind of using legal loopholes to say, listen, we can we can use. Uh, the county or a city can adopt it, but it's, it happens, the, the majority of the project happens in a financing institution, not at all inside of government. And the program, it comes in a box, so you'll get fully templatized um, everything. I received on Friday from the, from the program director um, the public hearing notices, like there, everything will be delivered for you guys just to put the word Titus County inside of it and sign off on. So. It's, it's, it's but nothing very, on evaluations, taxes, no. or anything. This it's is just it's not like a tax abatement. Like if that's right. what you're kind of referring, like where it would impact in any way, absolutely not. And which is what I mean by like, if you adopt it, 
it impacts the city, and that they would have to adopt it if it was like a tax abatement or something like that. There was impact in, on any sort of funds, and it's not. It's just a blanket um, voluntary program. And, and if we do approve this, it's just a blanket for the county. We don't decide who gets this program or who doesn't get that program. It's just a countywide program that they yeah. can use. Yes, sir. So the like, if company A was coming into town, there are approved through the state legislature uh, uh, financing institutions, and you can go to the list. I think Frost Bank's on. Like, there's a few banks um, that are approved that know this program, um, and it, that's what I mean. They'll, you'll probably never, never even know about it. So, yes, ma'am. No, no. no. So, the, um, let me let me restate that. Actually, I don't want to restate. It. I'd rather have you talk to the program director to, to explain it a little bit better. Um, uh, my, my suggestion, Judge Cooper, with your with your input, sorry. I, I'll leave the auditor, the decision makers are there, so I would prefer that we do this at a time where, where they can hear that, and I'm pressing that they would like to be pressed. I don't. Absolutely. However, the county would like to do that. I know that that we had our first executive session in a very long time, and happy to do that again. It's we, we feel very comfortable working in executive sessions, um, and then we can come out hopefully and, and do that. Would would, would, would the next session be a good time for that, or in between? Is there some sometime in between the next two weeks? Either way, we won't vote on it in executive session. The only way we're yep. going to vote on it is on the agenda and mm -hmm. we'll go from there. So, yeah. I'd say put it on the agenda and okay. bring your presentation there instead of waiting it in a, well, well, in a closed well, session. But that's just. Yeah. Yeah. You got your opinion? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I don't see no point in us meeting an executive session on this. Unless y'all do. We'll so just put it on the agenda. And okay. Then I'll shoot you this letter and it has a little information on it. You can go to the website as well and educate yourself on in the meantime. But happy to do that. Thank you for your time. Thank Appreciate you. it. Work. Closing comments, Jeff. Did you have Jeff? Did you have any any trees or anything down in your part of the county? Uh, I had one call and uh, mine. So kind of missed everything. I had really? one call Saturday evening down. That's it. Yes. Danny, you got quite a bit yeah. more rain than everybody else yeah. got. I think we got uh, we was about ten trees uh, Sunday last Sunday and then, uh, it's about fifteen. And uh, this past week, all through the week, we've had them all day out. Friday was cleaning up trees, getting them off the road anyway. Right. And uh, I appreciate you bringing, you and Nathan bringing that to the court on this project. I appreciate it. You bet. Jimmy, you got I anything had, out in your appreciate? I had one Saturday, had a, some during the week last week. I don't remember now what day it was, but we had, had a few then. But I had one Saturday, and that was... It, it was just a small deal. So, uh, like to say, the commissioners are doing a great job on that. Uh, be patient with us. It is wet this year. Uh, we're getting a whole lot more trees down than, than we normally do, and they're trying to get a lot of the a lot of the debris off the side, off the right top of the roads to get uh, bigger vehicles in and out. But it's wet, and uh, we can only do so much when it's wet. So, please bear with us on that. Judge, I'd like to say too that that uh, uh, we I know the right of ways are growing up pretty good, and we're going to uh, try to get on them. We've got a road that we've got tore up. We're trying to get it finished, and we get it finished, we, we're going to jump on right of ways and get them mowed and everything. Like I said, I, th I think y'all doing good on it, and it's just wet, and it's hard to mow right of ways when it's so wet, getting stuff stuck and things of that nature. Uh, also, I want to we're going to get with Mr. Bain, uh, Mr. Stancil coming. It's not just a Stancil law uh, in your precinct. We're trying to clean everybody's precincts up and uh, make them better for Titus County and and uh, whatever works the best to, to get that done is I think what we're all in agreements to try to get done and and also work with Officer Bain to to make it a smooth transition for everyone. So, with that being said, uh, take a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. Got a motion to adjourn by Commissioner Mitchell. Second. Second by Commissioner Applewhite. All those in favor? Uh, Commissioner Parker. I'm sorry. It's by Commissioner Parker. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, All those opposed?
Kees, you name us.